Hello everyone, welcome to the first part of the second lecture for ROPT 206 microcontrollers with lab. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the number systems. So for the uh, regular life or everyday life usages, we use the numbers to determine the quantity of something or to determine the size of something. We, we just uh, use the, the normal numbering system. The normal numbering system is known as the decimal system. And as you know, for the decimal system, we are using digits starting from 0, 1, 2, up to 9. So these digits are used for the decimal numbering system. And you are already familiar with them. You know what the meaning of the number 1, 2, 3 or 123 is or how you can add two numbers like 2.5 and 37 to each other. It, everything regarding the decimal numbers is known to you. On the other hand, there are other number systems which are useful to know as well. And in this lecture, we are going to learn about them. So for the decimal numbers, what we use is indeed we, we call it as the base 10 numbering system. Okay, so what we, we usually don't mention it, but we have it implicitly there. So when we have 123, it means that we have the number in the base 10, or it's a decimal number. When we have 3.75, it is indeed a base 10 number. We, we show it in this way, but we Normally, we don't mention it, okay? It is implicit. While for the other bases, we are going to show that because it is important. So I guess you already are getting what this 10 is here. We call it as base 10, and the 10 here is called as the radius, radix. So the radix could be 10 for the normal usages or some other value, as we will see. And one thing about is about the base or the radix is that it will be a positive value. So that base will be positive. It might be 10 or 2 or 4 or, or 8 or 16 and so on and so forth. For the numbering systems that we are discussing here, we are dealing with the positional number system indeed. The position of each digit determines its value. A number with radix r will be represented in this form as a string of the digits. You can see a dot here. So we have, let me highlight it. We have this dot here, which is known as the radix point. And it is indeed showing two parts of the number. The third the part to the left side is called as the integer part. I'm going to highlight it with some other color. So this part to the left of the radix point is called the integer part. And the part to the right side of the radix point, this part, which are shown with the digits in the negative indices, that part is called the fractional or fraction part. And this will be useful when we later we deal in terms of converting the numbers from one base to the other one. So you can see that the digits are shown as a underscore m minus 1, a underscore n minus 2, down to a1 and a0. And then after the radix point, they are called as a underscore minus 1, a underscore minus 2, up to a underscore minus m. One important thing here for the digits is that for each digit, a underscore i, the value will be always between 0 and r. 
where r is the base or it's the radix. So the r here is the base or radix. Coming back to the decimal numbers, for the decimal number we have the base as 10, we have a base 10, so radix is equal to 10, and as a result, AIs, the digits, will be between 0 and 10, excluding 10 itself. So AI can take values starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. These are the possible digits, the possible values that any digit in a decimal number could take. And you can see, see that in any example. Yeah. In terms of the value that we have for a number, referring to this positional number system, the actual number could be calculated in this way. A number in base R or in radix R could be obtained by adding these two two integer portion and fraction portion to each other, while for the integer portion we will have a summation starting from i equal to 0 up to i equal to n minus 1, and you can already correspond these values with what we have here. We have i equal to 0, 0 is there, and then we have i equal to n minus 1 and you should see n minus 1 here so we are spanning all the digits on the left hand side of the radix point and then we are multiplying each digit a underline a underscore i with the power of the radix r to the power of i and this i determines is or is determined by looking at the position of the digit so for the integer portion you see what what we have here then for the fraction portion we have the similar formula similar summation but this time for the indices we have j starting from minus m and you should see that minus m here and it will increase by one at each time up to j equal to minus 1 and you see that minus 1 here so we are spanning in it all the digits on the right hand side of the radix point for the fraction portion and then each digit will be multiplied by the power of the base or radix and for the fraction part you just should keep in mind that the powers will be negative j will be always negative for the fraction part and for the integer portion it will be always positive i starts from 0 and it goes up to n minus 1 let me go back to our example and we, we see how it works in it so we have 123 as a decimal number so it's in the base of 10 and we can calculate it in this way so we we have Let's say nothing after the radix point. We can show it in this way as well. So we have only the integer part, and therefore we will have the summation i starting from 0, going to 2, a i 10 to the power of i, as the base or r is equal to 10. And then we will have, we need to replace the digits by their corresponding value for this example so we will have for i equal to 0 we'll have 3 times 10 to the power of 0 plus for i equal to 1 we will have 2 times 10 to the power of 1 and for the i equal to 2 we will have 1 times 10 to the power of 2 so 10 to the power of 0 is 1 we will have 3 plus 2 times 10 which is 20 plus 1 times 100 which is 100 and you can see that it is already equal to 123 so you should indeed correspond these values here and there so that's how the actual value of a number could be calculated in a given base
so there are uh, the normally used in the base of 10 or the decimal numbers and the, the next in it uh, radix or base which is mostly used by the computers is the base 2 or binary system for the decimal system we know that the digits will start from 0 and they will go up to 9 and for the binary since for the binary r is equal to 2 the digits a i's will be between 0 and r minus 1 here r minus 1 is equal to 1 2 minus 1 is will give us 1 so a i will be between 0 and 1 it means that a i will take values either 0 or 1 so the digit digits will be equal to 0 or 1 and you can see the general case here yeah when we have the radix equal to r the digits will start from 0 and they will go up to r minus 1 then you can uh, have a look at the powers of the radix so when we have power of 0 we will have r to the power of 0 when we have 1 there will be r to the power of 1 and so on and so forth for the positive values of the power and also for the negative values of the power and here in the third column you can see the actual values for the decimal system so r is equal to 10 here 10 to the power of 0 is equal to 1 10 to the power of 1 is 10 100 and so on and so forth and then on the last uh, column you can see the values in decimal for the powers of the base which is 2 here so 2 to the power of 0 will be equal to 1 in decimal 2 to the power of 1 will give us 2 2 to the power of 2 will give us 4 and so on and so forth just keep in mind that these values are in the base 10 and here you can see the negative powers in it yeah? r to the power of minus 1 minus 2 until r to the power of minus 5 so we have two examples of the basis here yeah? decimal and binary you are already familiar with the decimal but binary is also a commonly used numbering system for the computers so here we have a list of the commonly occurring bases this one we already know so decimal radix is equal to 10 and the digits will start from 0 and they will go up to 9 the next one that we just considered is the binary system for the binary system the radix is equal to 2 and therefore the digits will be only 0 and 1 so if we have a number in this case all the digits will be either 0 or 1 so this can be an example of a binary number then the next one which is also useful is the octal system for the octal numbers the radix is equal to 8 as a result the digits value will be between 0 and 7 and i can give you an example of a so I forgot to write 2 here. I can give you an example of an octal number in this way. 673.051 in the base of 8. And the last one that we will consider is the hexadecimal one. For the hexadecimal numbering system the base or radix is equal to 16 and as a result the digits will be between 0 and 16 minus 1 which is equal to 15 so we'll have 0 1 2 3 up to 9 and then we will have 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 but in order to not to uh, mix the number or the digit a single digit of 10 with two digits of 1 and 0 letters will be used so we will use letters like a b c d e and f to refer to digits which have the value of 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 an example of a hexadecimal number could be like this 1 
7ac.0 t9 in the base of 16. So even by looking at the number you can kind of say that this this is not a decimal number it's not a number in the radix 8 or 2 but it is a hexadecimal number. So you can see the difference between the uh, different numbering systems uh, here for the binary octal decimal and hexadecimal numbering systems. Over here in this table, uh, we have the decimal numbers starting from 0 up to 16 expressed in binary, octal, and hexadecimal or base 2, base 8, and base 16 cases. For 0, And since we are we want to go up to 16, we need to use two digits. That's why you can see here 0, 0. For the number 0, in two digits we have 0, 0 for the base 10. For the binary, all the digits will be equal to 0. And we need five digits in this case because 16 could be expressed only with five digits and not less. For the octal or base 8, it will be equal to 0, 0. Two digits will be enough here. And for the hexadecimal, again, two digits will be used. As another example, we can take 0, 9 into account. For 0, 9, we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 for the binary case. Let me write it here. We have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 as the binary number. And this is equivalent to 0, 9 in the decimal case. As for the octal, its equivalent would be equal to 1, 1. So it's equal to 1, 1 in the octal form and it's equal to 0, 9 in the hexadecimal base. So you can see that depending on which base we are using, whether base 2, 10, 8, or 16, a number could be expressed in different ways. So for example, for 14, you can see that for all cases, we have a different representation for the same number, okay? It's important to keep in mind that that number is the same number for all three, all four cases. We already know how to find the equivalent value for this number so 0 1 0 0 1 in the binary case could be obtained its equivalent value in the decimal could be obtained by referring to the summation that we had i equal to 0 up to so we have five digits here it will go up to four i starting from zero to i equal to 4, a i r to the power of i, and r here is equal to 2. So we can start by i equal to 0, then 1 and 2 and so on and so forth. We will have 1 times 2 to the power of 0 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 3 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 4. And if you do the calculation, you will get with the same number 9. And you can try it for the octal system. For the octal, we will get 1 times 8 to the power of 0 plus 1 times 8 to the power of 1, which is equal to 1 plus 8, and it gives us 9. And similarly, you can check it for the hexadecimal case. We will discuss more regarding converting from one base to the next base in the next videos. But over here you can see in the example, in the table here, you can see how a single or the same number could be expressed in different ways in different bases. So it's quite important to know which base you are expressing your number because then you will you will have the we will indeed perform some operation on those numbers. 
All right, so now let's see how we can convert a binary number to decimal in another example. As you can see here, the example which is provided for us is equal to 1011.1. So 1011.1 is in base 2 and we want to find its equivalent in base 10. We already have done an example, but here we will do, we will do it for this one as well. We know that we can refer to the formula that we have, summation of AIR to the power of I plus summation of AJR to the power of J for the integer part and for the fraction part. Let's do it directly here. So I put a plus sign here at the position of the radix point. 1 will be multiplied by 2, which is r here, to the power of minus 1. It will be added to the 1 times 2 to the power of 0 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 3. So 1 times 2 to the power of minus 1 will be 1 times 2 to the power of minus 1 will give us 0 0.5 or 1 over 2 which is 0 0.5 1 times so 0 0.5 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0 will give us 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 will give us 2 0 times 2 to the power of 2 will give us 0 and then 1 times 2 to the power of 3 will give us 8. So 8 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0 0.5 will give us 11.5. And then we can say that 1011.1 is equal to 11.5 in base 10. We have another example here. We want to convert 11010 in base 2 to the equivalent number in base 10. Let me write it again here. 11010. We want to find its equivalent in base 10. So we can start by multiplying the first digit or the rightmost digit by 2 to the power of 0. Here we only have the integer part. Plus. 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 3 and finally plus 1 times 2 to the power of 4. And therefore we will have 0 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 will give us 2 plus 0 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 3 will give us 8 plus 16 and this will be equal to 26 so 11010 in base 2 will be equal to 26 in base 10 so you see how to convert from base 2 to base 10 or from binary to decimal and it is quite straightforward here in this example, we are going to see how we can convert from octal to the decimal. As we are dealing with the octal numbering system, the digits will take values between 0 and 7. And the example that we have here follows it. So we have 2365.2 as the octal number and we want to find its equivalent in decimal. So we, we just need to follow the formula that we have for the integer part and for the fraction part. For the fraction part, we will have 2 times 8 to the power of minus 1. And then for the integer part we will have 5 times 8 to the power of 0 plus 6 times 8 to the power of 1 
plus 3 times 8 to the power of 2 plus 2 times 8 to the power of 3. And then you can find out the equivalent or the result of the multiplication. You will have 5 here plus 6 times 8 will give us 48 plus 3 times 64 plus 2 2 times 8 will be equal to 16 times 64. You just need to use the calculator and then do the addition. 2 over 4 will, will be equal to 0 0.25 in lithium. And then you can find out the equivalent value for this. I'm not going to do the multiplication and addition. It's something that you can do on your own. I just wanted to show how you can convert from the octal to the decimal. And here we have another example of converting from non-decimal, which is hexadecimal here, to decimal. Since we are dealing with the hexadecimal number, the digits, each digit will take value between 0 and 15, which is indeed shown with F here. So in total, we will have 16 possible values for each digit. Our example is shown here, 26BA in the base of 16. And alternatively, it could be shown as 0x. 0x means that we are dealing with a hexadecimal number. So 0x, 26BA. And we want to find its equivalent in the decimal numbering system. So we just need to use the same formula. Sum of a i r to the power of i for the integer part. Sum of a j r to the power of j for the fraction part. And since here we don't have any fraction, we just need to stick to the integer part. So we will multiply the digits a by 16 to the power of 0, then add it to b multiplied by 16 to the power of 1, then 6 multiplied by 16 to the power of 2, and then 2 multiplied by 16 to the power of 3. When you do the multiplication, then you can use the decimal equivalent value for a, which is equal to 10. 10 times 1 will give you 10 plus b is 11, so we will have 11 times 16 plus 6 times 16 to the power of 2 plus 2 times 16 to the power of 3. If you do the multiplications and additions, you will end up with the proper value, proper decimal equivalent value for this. As we will see later, when we convert a number from hexadecimal to binary and vice versa, we will see that using hexadecimal way of expressing the numbers makes it more compact. So it's still, we know that 16 is equal to 2 to the power of 4. So the base 2 and base 16 are related to each other and we will see how we can use this relation in order to convert a number from hexadecimal to binary or vice versa. But as we, I just mentioned, if we use the hexadecimal way of expressing a number, then we will have a more compact way of how the number is expressed, and then it makes things simpler. Yeah. Uh, let me give you the same example here. So we have 26BA expressed in the hexadecimal form. If we want to express this in the binary form, over here we have four digits. In the binary form, we will have 16 digits. Later you will see how to do this. Okay, But just to show you that, how compact it is if you use the hexadecimal expression for a number compared to the binary number. But anyways, everything within the computer will be uh, stored and will be dealt with as zeros and ones, which are, which are what we have for the binary numbers. But in order to show it, it's, it's usually better to use the hexadecimal way of 
expressing it. For example, we have here, I think you, you already have seen something similar to this if you are using Windows for your computer. You can see that here we have a given address of the memory, which is shown as 0x08f3d9220. It's already kind of a long number, but if you wanted to express it or show it in the binary form, you will get a huge number. So instead of each one of these digits, we would need to use four digits. And as a result, we would have a quiet long number, which would be more difficult to deal with. All right, so I think that's all for this video lecture. In the next lecture, we will see how to convert between different mazes. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video later.